All right, my friends, again, apologies for all the technical messiness, but you know, that's life. It's part and parcel of what's happening in the world. Microcosm, microcosm, all that. Let me unbutton my pants here. I guess it's a little tight around the waist. All right, so we're live on one camera on a webcam on YouTube. We're live on one webcam on a uh, laptop on Facebook. And uh, we're just going to roll with the uh, stream now. Thank you all so much for your patience, for still being here. And, of course, the intention of this is to send some love and light to the world because it's in a funny state. And um, it's going through some birthing pains right now and some dying pains and some uh, transition pains. So thanks for the help, guys. Um, let's take a moment to just check the time. Yeah, let's just take a moment to take a deep breath. Okay, take a deep breath and... Relax. And notice that as all this is happening, that there is, as always, this background, this stable presence, this you that does not change, because of which, due to which, in front of which, if you will, all this... Uh, the shenanigans of everyday life up here. And again, we'll start the official meditation in about 13 or so minutes to sync up with the world. And if you have any questions for now, feel free to ask. If not, I'll just uh, mainly hold a silent space here until then. And once you're good, once you found your preferred live stream. Don't get too distracted by the chats and the messages and all that. Kind of tune into yourself. Let's see if you can recognize that background of that which never leaves, that which makes all this perception possible, that which does not change or budge or get distracted even when the thoughts are focused on different phenomena. Good to see some old friends pop up too. Very nice. Shoot, we have an intention or just being present. Well, the intention is to come together. And my particular intention, because there's many of these going around at the moment, I think, these group meditations. My particular intention is a combination of cultivating faith in the highest reality, faith in the fact that what is occurring currently is actually somehow in all of our best interests. And again, whenever we see that something is perfect for something, then we actually extract the most beneficial reality out of that situation rather than defining it in the ways that everyone else defines it. So part of the intention for me in hosting this is to generate a sense of deeper trust 
another intention or aspect of the intention is to generate a greater unity consciousness. And just uh, for me to speak a little bit about the topic of unity consciousness, to generate a greater awareness of what that is. And the other intention would be forgiveness, the energy of forgiveness. It doesn't even have to be forgiveness specifically, but the word forgiveness comes closest in some senses to this energy, this frequency state, and that is one of love and acceptance. And it is a requirement for moving into any kind of new reality. It is quite difficult, if not impossible, to completely shift into different reality, uh, vibrationally speaking, state of being wise, but also physically on a global scale, if forgiveness is not a profound part of our experience. And again, the official meditation time hasn't started yet. I wanted to have some time before then to connect with you guys, come together and kind of warm up our uh, vibrational engines of consciousness to uh, be in the proper state before we actually start the guided meditation. Again, for those who are joining right now, we've had some technical difficulties live streaming with our setup to YouTube with our uh, proper camera lighting setup and all that and audio. So we decided to go um, to just use the laptops that we have available and use the webcams to live stream both to Facebook right now and to YouTube. So again, welcome. Thank you for being here. And um, We'll still be recording it in higher quality, so maybe we'll be able to, uh, if everything panned out, we'll be able to upload that to YouTube so you can watch it later and tune in again. Which actually brings me to an interesting topic, because from a deeper point of view, there actually is no time. So these uh, syncing up at the same time, although it does have a power on a relative level, you can sync up to any event across space-time because um, and I actually recommend you guys watch not right now maybe but watch after this at some point the new video um, which is actually just audio but it's a video on YouTube that just got released on my channel it's about an hour long and it talks about parallel realities in depth and then goes through other deeper topics as well but it makes clear how actually time is an illusion and all these uh, parallel possibilities of the one infinite creator coexists at once, as if in a timeless state, in a timeless field of now, if you will. And you can learn to actually tap into, to tune your consciousness to other vibrational realities that are not happening here and now, are not happening in your physical time space. So. You can even watch the video of this later and still add your thoughts, add your love and your light to the collective intention of this session. And again, just want to reiterate how both powerful and at the same time meaningless words are. And the deeper that we know ourselves, the deeper that we sink into what we are, the less we need the externalization of that, including words. So the main reason I'm using words and thoughts is actually for the purpose of teaching and creating things like this. But when it comes to my internal need to know myself, words are no longer necessary. And so what happens is a beautiful natural process of the more clearly, I'll just use the word consciousness for now, the more clearly that consciousness, that universal principle within you knows itself, 
the more reflective you become of it directly, the more direct your recognition of this consciousness, which currently is perceiving this video and the thoughts you're having and the sounds and all that. That principle within you that doesn't change, that's always here. That is in an essentially timeless state. The more directly it knows itself, the less and less you'll need words and definitions and labels. You, you, you won't need to go through them anymore to know yourself. They're just like mirrors. They're permission slips to know yourself. So my point being is that, yes, words are very powerful to point people to point the mind in the direction of the recognition that is desired to tune it to, to tune its attention to whatever the reality is that is meant to be conveyed, that we believe is beneficial to the individual to recognize. But once you recognize something, you no longer need the pointer so much. You no longer need the words. The more clearly you recognize and know yourself directly, the less there is a need of words and concepts. But also, again, concepts are powerful um, in their ability to point and create and direct attention. And so, again, begin to unwind and slow down as our meditation time is officially drawing closer. We have about three minutes left until we plug our minds, if you will, our hearts, our intention, into the collective grid with the intention of aiding humanity, of aiding the smooth transition into the highest reality for all. And again, if you kind of quiet your mind and you become more aware of the space that's here, while you lovingly sort of place your attention on even just everyone that's currently made the effort to be here to tune into the live streams. I know some of you guys have set your alarms, you've woken up. It's currently almost 4.45 a.m. here in Holland, where I'm at. And a lot of people are awake for this intention. And just gently place your attention on the fact that so many of us with similar intent have come together and just uh, appreciate the gratitude that can well up from that fact. And then just know that we're just a small representation of humanity. And there's many people doing this right now, which is cool. Even though time is not real, it's still a cool manifestation. It's powerful to have that collective sort of symbol of these types of events. All right, so let's tune in even more. Take a deep breath. Feel your body and relax your body. Any tension you might have, let's start with the physical body for just a second. And relax. Relax. 
Take another deep breath and again, notice any tension left in the body and visualize it relaxing. One more deep breath. And relax the body into silence. Hmm. And as soon as we relax our bodies and our minds, what becomes available is a deeper, more pristine, clear consciousness that is part of our natural condition. And this gives us access to a truer state of meditation truer state of intention. Now take another deep breath and relax the mind. Again, as preparation for the meditation, become less active in the chats. Relax all your distractions, focus on my voice, if anything. And again, recognize the quality of space, the quality of spaciousness. And also notice the quality of clarity, the quality of consciousness, the quality of the fact that you are aware. And see that even as thoughts and sensations and sounds are happening, they are not innately distracting. There is this space which is not affected, which is not distracted, that you can recognize, that you can anchor in, that you can hone in on which gives you the ability to feel your undistracted nature throughout these appearances, throughout the thoughts and the emotions and the feelings. And it becomes especially apparent in times like these, when all the externalized symbolizations of yourself, the structures of your society, the structures of your thinking, the things that you relied on external, to your true self. When they are changing in a state of change, in a state of flux, when their reliability seems to fail, then what have you to go on except yourself? For some of you, this might not be your direct experience yet. So if that's the case, just kind of take it on faith, if you can. But what you are is eternal. I just came down to play, to have a, a game-like experience, a playful experience here. You were never meant to be rigidly focused on anything present in your physical experience or environment. You were never meant to rely on particular systems 
of thought or constructs of society. You've never actually, in truth, been reliant on any of these concepts or components. You are not now, you have never been, and you never will be, not in truth. And so reclaim the power of your unshakability, the power of your freedom, the power of your, for lack of a better word, detachment, your ability to rely on yourself, for that's all that attachment, detachment really is, is the ability, the remembrance that you can rely on yourself. You don't have to go through filters and constructs that are externalized, that are externalizations of yourself, symbols of yourself. You can directly rest in the beingness, in the I am here, I exist, of your own nature. And in that field, in that intrinsically ever-present field, that presence, that existence, there is a power, there is an intelligence that awakens within you every time you take the time to recognize its presence. It begins to inform the body and the mind and the feelings and the emotions. And it begins a loving detachment process. A process where you begin to no longer rely so much, less and less, on these externalized, symbolized constructs. And there's no greater power than this, my friends. And this is the foundation of meditation. This is the foundation, it's the beginning and the end. It's the Alpha and the Omega of your meditation is to rely on your true self, to be able to recognize and identify that free quality of I exist and to see that it is all pervasive, to see that it is eternal and changeless, that it does not play the game of space and time This will dispel over time with practice all of your fears. And it's the foundation to springboard for any intention you might have for your relative individuated experience of the Creator. So as you relax into the space, we will begin to move our attention to the intention of this particular call, of this particular calling, because that is what it is. The more you become of service to others in your the makeup of your beingness, in your practice, the more empty you become of your own attachments to externalized symbols of yourself, structures, systems, concepts, and so forth, words even, even thoughts ultimately, the less you become reliant on thoughts and emotions and feelings and structures and agreements and all that, the more naturally, by your very nature, you become of service to other selves. These are selves that appear to be other, when in truth they are like different points in the tablecloth. They're really made of the same stuff. And so naturally, by nature, you become beneficial to your environment. Your attitude changes from what can I get to what can I give because there's nothing else to really do, you see, but to radiate, but to give that recognition of your true self and the unique ways in which it flows through your particular mind, body, spirit complex, to be attuned to that, to be aligned to that. And so, let us, from this peaceful state, move our intention towards the picture or the image 
of the earth that your body seems to walk on every day. Let's start with the planet itself. Because it is not everything that appears on it dependent on it. Is the fact that we have these problems and difficulties and challenges and arguments and conflicts worldwide, are they not proof and testament of the fact that we should be grateful for the fact we can even have those problems and conflicts and challenges? We get so overly fixated on the problems and the challenges and the difficulties and the conflicts that we forget to realize that without everything that we are and have and without this planet, without everything that's being given to us in all these different ways within this grand illusion of creation, this magical appearance of your life, without all that, we wouldn't have any substance to complain about. So every complaint in this way can be turned into gratitude because if you have something to complain about, it proves that you have something to be grateful for. Because without all that you are, you would not be able to complain. Without everything given to you, you would not be able to perceive issues or difficulties or challenges or puzzles. So let your complaints and your fears and worries turn into gratitude. Turn your attention radically away from what's lacking or what seems to be lacking or missing. And towards the fact that that proves that you have so much to rely on and to be grateful for and to appreciate. And my friends, there is very few vibrations more powerful than gratitude. I know it's almost cliche to say, but it is true. Gratitude, forgiveness, love. Those are your mainstays. Those are your foundations. Those bring you back to center. And in the eye of the storm, there is that centeredness. And there is a storm appearing, at least, in the consciousnesses of the majority of the people on this planet. There is a storm happening. But whether you are swayed by that storm or whether you stay aware of the eye of the storm, where all is still and centered, where there is a sense of gratitude and love and generosity naturally present, is up to you. No circumstance or other person can demand that you step out of your center of alignment, your center of awareness. So know that the storm might be raging all around. But there's a center within you, and it is the gratitude and the love and the willingness to be generous that brings you back to that center and to the power and the abundance that is available, to the intelligence that is available to you naturally. You don't have to be smart. You don't have to be practiced. It is naturally already available to you. All you need to do is be aware of your connection to the eye of the storm when the storm seems to be raging. And how can we give that which we don't have? How can we send love and light and gratitude and centeredness and stability and unflinchingness and unperturbedness and peace, how can we send this to the world if what we are consumed by is the same focus on difficulty that the majority of people right now is concerned with and focused upon? Does it not require a different state of consciousness to be able to aid and assist the other state of consciousness? Indeed, as someone commented in the chat, 
no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. And so it is. So your state is first and foremost. Now, this is the selfish element, the seemingly selfish aspect of being of service to others is that we need to cultivate the discipline, the awareness, the vigilance, the intent, the desire and the practice to focus on ourselves to the extent that we stay centered in the eye of the storm, that we stay connected to this ever present intelligence, this informing principle, and allow it to flow through our bodies and our minds, to stay connected to that recognition of that center, and to allow it to let it inform our bodies and our minds and our actions and our speech. And it is naturally by nature generous. It is naturally by nature radiant. You are naturally by nature radiant. So all you have to do is connect to that which is naturally the case. You don't have to practice becoming radiant and giving. You don't have to become able to send love and light. You are all the time in the center of your being. So relax the body, relax the mind, return to center. And that center will inform you as I currently am. With the natural intent. To radiate love, forgiveness, peace, harmony, solutions. Into this planet and into the collective consciousness of mankind. And today we won't be going into any of the issues that seem to plague our civilization. We will instead continue to focus on the solution, the state which offers the solution. The only thing I will have you tap into, tune into, to activate this sense of compassion, this sense of generosity, this sense of reorienting your life and your consciousness and where you place your attention. To shift to naturally being more of service to each other, to the greater good, and less caught up in the bubble of our selfishness. is to become aware, to imagine, if you will, or become aware of the calling that exists in the hearts of billions of people right now, all across the world. Now, this calling is not new. It didn't just arrive with the virus and the media and the lockdowns. No, this calling has been present for many, many, many years. And this is the calling for clarity. It's the calling for resolve. It's the calling for harmony, for peace, for love, for forgiveness. It's been in the hearts of mankind. It's been in the hearts of people for a long time. So become aware, just lightly, from a place of maintaining your center, not getting lost in any of the stories, but just becoming aware of the need that is present in mankind for clarity, for love. The calling, the asking that is there for love, for liberation. Just gently be aware of the crying hearts of humanity without getting lost in defining that as a problem, without getting lost in seeing that as wrong as seeing that as sad. Just be aware of the calling. Be aware of the need that exists in the hearts of men. Gently be aware of that and let it activate within you this blueprint of why you are here. Let it Realign your priorities. 
to become a clearer match to being able to offer the solution that is being sought, that is being called for. And again, what is the solution but connection to self, connection to the invisible self, to many different degrees, in many ways and distortions. Not everyone will be fully enlightened by 2035. But that's not the point. The point is that we are all on our journey, and the point is that we are all here with a similar intention and the point is that there are billions of people out there calling for assistance, calling for help, whether or not they are fully aware of this. And the point is that you are here in a fully functioning incarnative experience. And that you, as someone listening to information like this, is able to realign your priorities, to realign your life, to come from that center, to become aware of this calling more consciously. And I believe it's what brought many of you even here to begin with. So why not live out your purpose? Why not live out the very thing that brought you here, the intention that brought you here? By lovingly hearing the call, not closing your ears to them, not closing your heart to that calling, but to respond one step at a time, one day at a time, Always checking in at the start, middle, and end of your day to see if you're still in the center, if you're still in the eye of the storm, or if you've gotten caught up in the negative definitions that this society is so keen on throwing out there onto whatever appears. Can you remain undistracted by these definitions, by these popular ideas? Can you see through the mist? Can you see through the storm and stay in center? So that this infinite intelligence, which made all of us, this oneness, if you will, can more effortlessly, more directly inform your body, your mind, your speech, your actions, your inspirations, your attention. Let the creator talk to you, through you. Let it speak to you. Let it inform you. Let it guide you. Let it inspire you. Don't let human definitions inspire you. Let the calling, which is real, in the hearts of many, let that inspire you. Let that be the fuel for your compassion, the motivation for your realignment of your priorities to become more of service to the benefit of all. But let that which informs your actions be the space which is hearing my voice right now. Be the eye of the storm which does not change, which does not move. Develop that relationship to yourself. Remember your eternal nature. Remember your infinite capacity. Remember that in truth, in essence, that ultimately what you are is no different from that infinite source, that infinite creator, which enabled all this. And so we are all gathered here, hundreds of people gathered just for this little stream, with the same intent, whether or not we're fully aware of it. And this is a part of uniting our consciousness in service to the whole, for the benefit of all, realizing that there is no separation, that the calling from another self is really my own calling for clarity, my own calling for love, and that I too, you too, have been there. And while you have your own perceived difficulties and challenges and issues and unique lessons to learn, there's many who can already benefit from what you are, from what you have accomplished, from what you have transmuted within yourself during your time in this incarnation and who knows how many others. So absolutely, you have all the tools you need to be of benefit right now. And wouldn't it satisfy you? Wouldn't it fulfill you to be able to devote yourself to this love and this light being sent out to all beings for your tools to be naturally informed by this presence, by this intelligence that makes your heart beat every second without you thinking about it. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you can sort of float on a cloud, relax, be grounded, but wide open like a cloudless sky? 
and let that cloudless sky, let that nature inform your actions and your inspiration. So perhaps close your eyes. And visualize, picture, imagine, tune into planet Earth with its beautiful atmosphere around it, its protective aura, if you will. And now picture all the millions, billions of people on the surface of this earth. Picture the different continents briefly. Picture all the cities that are lit up. All the empty spaces, the beautiful, untouched nature that's still available. Feel into the oceans for a minute. The profundity, the beauty, the healing power of the oceans. Water. The dependence that our bodies have on it. The gratitude that we have for it. The interconnectedness of all these things of land, earth, sky, air, atmosphere, water, movement, fire. And for a moment also realize that the human aspect is just one aspect of millions of aspects of what's happening on this gorgeous, amazing, dreamlike creation that we call Earth. And we're just a small aspect of the interconnectedness of all things. However, this small aspect, which is mankind, has a powerful influence due to its unique if you will, incarnative state, its unique mind, body, spirit, complex availability. So although we are a small aspect of this planet, we are in many ways its shepherd. We are responsible for the vibrations that we carry forth, for the consciousness that we carry with us on a day-to-day -day basis. The consciousness, the state of being that we bring into our thoughts and our emotions and our intentions and our actions. And see how interconnected humans are. We share one atmosphere, one aura, one planet. And see the confusion present in many of these hearts without getting swallowed up in it. And know within yourself that you have the natural connection to life needed to radiate them to them, the love and the light of the clarity that you are. And so visualize that. Visualize the radiating from the heart of what you are. You can picture it through your body if you want to. This love and this light radiating a forgiving quality all across the atmosphere of this planet. Just blow it into the wind, if you will, and radiate it like a sun at the speed of light to all aspects and components of this planet. Most specifically, the hearts of mankind, the minds, the babbling 
minds of mankind, the undirected, confused thoughts of mankind. And let your light shine through them and pervade through them and blast through them with a sense of clarity and love and forgiveness. Grace. Even hope, if you will. Radiate faith, faith and trust in the fact that all is well, even when it appears to not be so. Radiate a sense of stability, a sense of a safe foundation. And if all of mankind could feel this safety, this metaphysical, vibrational, ultimate safety within themselves, see how many of their distortions, their thoughts, their confusions, their actions would instantly realign to a state of benevolence, a state of grace, a state of absolutely effortless generosity and service to the benefit of all. Because that's what we all desire. That's what we're all made of. That is that unity blueprint, that unity consciousness, which is the foundation, the substratum of all human beings. Radiate confidence in this, into the hearts of the billions of people that walk this earth in differing levels of confusion, of calling, of seeking. Ease the suffering in a completely invisible way, not taking credit for anything, just radiating out of the love of your heart, knowing that the oneness of people is a fact, that the interdependence upon one another, the interconnectedness is as real as anything else you call real. And so, to radiate to another is to radiate to yourself. And to connect yourself to this eye of the storm, this connection with your true self is a gift to others by nature, even if nothing is ever done with it physically. Your connection to yourself, your radiance within yourself, the clarity and confidence and faith within yourself, effortlessly radiates into this interconnected atmosphere, this aura, this one singular aura that surrounds our entire planet. We breathe the exact same atmosphere. We are part and parcel, our electromagnetic fields are part and parcel of the electromagnetic field of this one gorgeous planet. All our thoughts are everyone's thoughts. All our emotions are everyone's emotions. Therefore, all of our enlightenment, all of our clarity, all of our radiance is everyone's radiant. Understand that you're closer to all the people on this planet than you realize when you just live your everyday life in your own house, doing your own groceries, focusing on your own projects, living in your own bubble with your own family, perhaps. It's easy to forget that we breathe the same air. It is easy to forget that our thoughts are everyone's thoughts and everyone's thoughts are our thoughts. It is easy to block ourselves off from this calling that is ever present in this field, calling from the hearts of millions, for love, for clarity, for forgiveness, for acceptance, for worthiness, for a glimpse of the one infinite creator, for the glimpse of that connectedness. And by nature, you are able to radiate that onto them. But it requires that your life is aligned to that purpose, is aligned to that intention, first and foremost, for your own connection to Source, to God, to the Creator, 
whatever you wish to call that which enables us to have this experience. Now picture from the center of our galaxy a light that's so radiant, that's so pristine, that's so perfect, that is so heavenly, that like the pulsation of the heartbeat, boom, 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 continues to radiate into all the solar systems, and furthermore, into all the planets and all the species. And understand that not only are we inseparable from this planet and from the aura of this planet, not only do we breathe the same air and are our thoughts everyone's thoughts and everyone's thoughts are our thoughts. The same applies to the entire galaxy, the entire universe. And just like there's a center to this storm, there is a center to the entirety of creation. There is a God, if you will. There is a central intelligence that effortlessly and ever-presently permeates, is part and parcel of the very substrate and the very fabric of every single one of your thoughts. There is this great unity that is all things, that is the essence of all manifestation which is inescapably here. You cannot have a thought without it present. You cannot have a perception without its heart beating effortlessly. You cannot have an experience without the illuminating quality of this consciousness, this intelligence, this source awareness. And so you see, all is well. And we have to simply realign to this natural state to know God more deeply within, more directly within. To not be fooled by the illusion of the endless appearances of thoughts and definitions and descriptions. There is an entire world of intelligence available to you beyond the realm of descriptions, beyond the realm of judgments. Without your mind, you still exist. You still are everything you are. So again, go beyond the mind, travel into the heart of the universe, the center of all of manifestation, and remember this light. See if you can glimpse a sense of this perfected light, this completed beingness that does not really exist in time, that's never been created, and therefore can never cease to be. And know that this heart is benevolent. It's good beyond measure. It is gracious beyond our ability to confine, define, or describe. It is beyond all categorizations, beyond all illusions. It is beyond light and dark. It is beyond positive or negative. It is the great unity, the great mystery, the great power that enables all things to be exactly as they are. It is the source of all possibility. It is the source of the possibility of perception. We owe everything to the central intelligence, which is not man-made. It is natural. It is the love that is not personal, 
but yet illuminates every personal aspect of ourselves and embraces it as if nothing ever faces it. Nothing ever poses a challenge to this love. There is no conflict in the world. There's no conflict within you. There's no conflict within mankind. There's no problem in the world. Profound enough to even for a second make this light doubt its own love for all aspects of itself, for all of the manifestation. You cannot make a dent in this love. You cannot put a scratch on it. It is stainless. It is unaffected. You cannot touch it, yet it touches every aspect of your life, every aspect of our collective journey. And it ever presently witnesses or knows or comprehends the entire journey of time that we believe we find ourselves in. And this grace is ever present to all beings, to all creatures, to all creations. And you can picture it as if it's coming from the heart of our galaxy, if you will. It's just a picture to help the mind orient itself. Of course, the true center, the true source of this intelligence has no real center because it doesn't go by space and time terms. It doesn't go by categorizations and definitions. It does not see separation or duality. It only knows its own heartbeat. It only knows its own essence. It only knows its own completed timeless perfection. And it is ever radiating that onto every other dimensional aspect of this illusion that we call creation and experience. Experience is the projection of this power, of this love, no matter what is projected, it is still based in this universal, absolute perfection. If you align your thoughts, your consciousness to this central power of perfection, you will then naturally begin to emanate, become a channel for that love and that light. And that begins to inform your body, realign it. It begins to inform your mind and realign it. It begins to inform your emotions and realign them. It begins to inform your actions and your motivations and realign them, repurpose them. You can be repurposed, realigned by simply remembering this great unity of all things exactly as they are. Do not be confused, do not be distracted by the conflict that people believe is happening. There is no conflict, my friend. In the heart of all beings, in the essence of life, there is no conflict. There is no problem. Be logical about your physical conventional reality. But in your heart of hearts, in the heart of your consciousness, please do not be swayed, do not be distracted by the thoughts that society gifts to events and circumstances. Stay centered on this great central love, this perfection, without which none of this could even appear. And radiate this love, this unity, this light into the atmosphere, into the electromagnetic field of our lovely, amazing planet. And forgive every human being on this planet. We get lost in the conflict. We call ourselves the good guys, the light workers. But you know, in truth, we're just part of the problem. The problem which doesn't exist. Exactly my point. There is a state beyond polarity. There is a state beyond positive or negative, beyond self and others the great unity of the infinite intelligence. Remember this. It's not a mental remembering. It's an instinctual remembering. And we all have access to it because we're never apart from this light which does not wobble, which does not flinch, which does not perceive conflict when you say there is, which does not perceive problems when you are convinced that there are, which does not know hatred even when you're fueled 
with frustration. It never despairs, and it is ever-present for all beings, for all creatures. We have to but turn our attention back to the essence, back to the heart of this all, that isness, this creation. And when you remember that, tell me, how can you not be of benefit? How can your mind and your body not be reinformed? How can you not naturally radiate generosity and forgiveness? The heart of creation loves you unconditionally. Always available to you. Connect to it and become a radiator, become a beacon of this knowledge, of this instinctive remembrance, this intuitional recognition of the source of all things, the unity beyond all these appearances. Will in due time show its temporary nature. It will, in due time, meet the Creator and disappear. But from the vantage point of the Creator itself, that moment is always here because it's not part of time. From the vantage point of the Creator, all of the creation has already begun, has already been happening, has already ended, and has already never happened as well. Connect to that timeless perfection and become a channel of it. It's really that simple. Surrender yourself to this intelligence. Become quiet. Open your heart. Allow and forgive yourself and others. And through this gratitude, reconnect to the central light of the galaxy that makes possible all of this rotational illusion that we experience. And yes, we're all guilty of forgetting every time, many times a day. And that's okay too. It gives us an opportunity to forgive again, to deepen our conviction, to deepen our faith, to deepen our surrender, to deepen our forgiveness. It allows us to relate to the perceived struggle in all those calling hearts and all those billions of people on this planet alone. And it allows us to get more anchored, to not be distracted by the conventional categorizations and definitions that society tells you are true and relevant and important. We become rebels by our very being, by our very connection to God. We become rebels to all the systems put in place by people who were more confused than you are today. There's no need to hate, to be frustrated, there's a need for forgiveness, and this is available to all. So you see, all that's happening right now on our planet, within our story mode, within our storyline, within the definitions of society, may appear to be very real but they will never be as real as the heart of the Creator, as the love which radiates like this perfect light that permeates all things, pervades all things, like the sun pervades the sky on a cloudless blue day. So too, the heart of what you are radiates goodness into everything that it manifests and creates. And all these seeming events in the storyline are part of an awakening so that more can remember the true value of consciousness, the true value of their spirituality, the true value of their devotion, of their commitment to what's truly important. Become a walking beacon of this love. 
I love you all. I thank you so much for being here. Please continue in silence for a few more minutes to radiate, to visualize the brightness, the unfathomable brightness of this God essence, this universal principle, this eternal self. And just make this planet seem so bright that you can barely look at it. Fill it with so much love and light that forgiveness is already a done deal. That correction is already a done deal. That healing is already a done deal. When things get so bright that you can't see what's left and what's right, what's shadow and what's bright, when all things are lit up with the same love and the same light, then the divisions disappear and all the struggles are instantly forgiven, healed and corrected. The planet can be entirely reinformed by this principle. As long as the shepherds that walk its earth, the people realign to the visualization and the instinctual understanding of this all pervasive center of the galaxy, unconditional, unflinching, unwavering love, and light. It is here for all of us in a timeless state of conditionless, stainless being. You are that. Turn your attention towards the light, the inner light. Remember. This will be an exciting planet for all beings. This will be a place of harmony. clarity, a great place to come and learn and study the ways of the Creator, to study the ways of love and light, an exciting school, an exciting playground with equal rights and equal love and understanding, healing, vitality, cleanliness, where each individual of the collective is in love with the collective. Each individual cannot help but radiate love and have no filters and boundaries and guards up around their hearts, but radiate that love, that recognition towards one another, knowing the other as one's self knowing the neighbor as oneself. This planet will be an amazing gift to whoever comes and visits it. This is an amazing planet. And humanity is healing fast. Let the old structures fall apart. Maintain faith in this reality. The highest benefit for all. This great radiance, the brightness. Where everyone needs to wear sunglasses on an everyday basis because the love and the light just is off the charts. Where all our problems have turned into exciting puzzles of new revelations and new challenges 
new frontiers. Instead of being pointed at each other, we are as one unity consciousness pointed towards the infinite possibility and potential of what it means to have a human form and what this planet can be like. It's really that simple. Forgiveness starts with us, starts with our remembrance of our eternal, wobble-free nature. And then just radiate that confidence, that love, that faith onto anyone you can imagine. Give them a gift they've never even thought was possible to come from another human being. A gift of love, a gift of forgiveness, a gift of total generosity. Demonstrate that you are there for them in a way that they're not even there for themselves. Radiate. Clarity, love, and light. Clarity, love, and light. Clarity, love, and light. Confidence, faith, and grace. Confidence, faith, and grace. Confidence, faith, and grace. You are by your very nature of benefit. Unleash your love onto this world. Thank you for having come to this planet. Thank you for having joined my live stream. I'm honored to see so many of you. Tune your love towards the benefit of all. I bid you good night, good day, good life, good eternity, a good play. Thank you very much.